Welcome to this special post-Oscars episode of Behind the Screen. I'm Carolyn Jardina, and joining me is Academy Award winner Paul Rogers, who last night won the Oscar for film editing for Everything Everywhere All at Once. Paul, congratulations. Thank you. How does it feel to hear Academy Award winner? It's very strange. I mean, the same way it felt to hear Academy Award nominee. And, you know, when we made the film, it was such a that was so far from our minds. It was it was almost a joke, you know. There's the only award that's in this film gets shoved up the butt of one of the characters. So, you know, that that shows that <laughs> what we were thinking about our award possibilities. Well, it was it was a great night and your speech was just great. It was so so gracious, uh talking about the Daniels, the cast, your crew and your family. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it's funny. I had more that I wanted to say, but I was, you get up there, you kind of blank for a second, then the you look up and there's a clock counting down. And then before you know it, it's just blinking huge at you. Wrap it up, wrap it up, wrap it up. So you kind of, you know, you're just trying to get through it as quickly as possible. But, you know, I had hoped to have time to thank all the the other nominees because one thing the Academy does really well and some of the other organizations like ACE, the American cinema editors and, and the guild MPEG um, is they, they get us together a lot, the other nominees. And so we have a dinner together, we have lunch together, we do these panels together and, um, and we're on an email chain. And so we've become buddies over the past couple of weeks and I'm just really, I was so excited to be nominated with them because I was excited to meet each of them. And they totally exceeded my expectations of just really kind, humble, smart, talented people. And they were so open and we were all so excited for each other and our partners and our families. And so, you know, I'm I'm bummed that I didn't get to say that on stage, but uh, we all were emailing this morning and, and, um, they were congratulating me, which is really sweet. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping we can all kind of continue our relationship into the future. I, I remember on Saturday when we were all at the American Cinema Editors and uh, Motion Picture Editors Guild event, it was really obvious how close you have all become. And I, I thought it was, I, I noticed when uh, when you won, the editors of Elvis were sitting right behind you. And I saw the three of you talked before you went on stage. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't we talk so much as just made noises and tried to touch hands, you know, what I mean? <laughs> just like, ah. um, but yeah, they're they're those two, Jonathan and Matt are are so like elegant and graceful and humble. Um, they're so they're just such they were so, it was so nice to have them seated behind me um, <laughs> because I felt like we were all just, uh, you know, you had kind of have your protection of family around you. It was great. Another thing, uh, which I, I know you mentioned during the evening, but we should point out was this was only your second movie. <laughs> yeah, it's my second feature film. You know, I've done some documentaries and things like that. But as far as like a narrative feature, this is this is number two. And the first one I did with Daniel Shiner called The Death of Dick Long. So, you know, so far I'm I'm continuing to just work with my buddies on projects that are interesting to me. And, you know, they're wildly different and have had wildly different receptions but i'm i'm so proud of all of them and it's the experience so much you know i would some one thing i realized working on this film and then going through this i guess my first uh award season is that i much i love making films uh, much more than i love having made a film and this whole awards season is wonderful and it's great to celebrate the film and everybody everybody who worked on it but you know, I would much rather be sitting in a room editing a film with these guys than talking about editing a film with these guys, you know? And so it's really made me miss just talking so much about the process in the film has really made me miss um, spending time with Dan and Daniel and, and the characters and the actors, you know, even just virtually. Um, so I'm excited to figure out a way to get back there as soon as possible. Well, to that end, uh, what's next? Do you know what the next project is that you'll all be working on? With them? I don't know. I mean, I think their full-time job was just um, getting through the craziness of <laughs> award season. The season. They had never done it before either. And, you know, they're exhausted. Um, 
they I think they're all going to just take some trips and some downtime. I'm taking some time off this week and just reconnecting with my family and spending time with my kids and, you know, hopefully sleeping a little bit and not talking about <laughs> editing, you know, I just want to <laughs> like remember that I'm an editor and not someone who talks about editing. So, um, yeah, I don't know what's coming up. I, while we were working on this movie, they had a million ideas for the next movie. And, you know, with them, because they're just kind of constantly spewing ideas out, you can never tell what's an actual like script that they're writing or just a kind of like imagination flight of fancy that they're on for a couple of days. But um, whatever it is, I'm sure, you know, it'll be great. Do you know what your next project will be? I'm I I did a film for A24 called The Legend of Ochi with um uh, another first time feature director Isaiah Saxon and we we wrapped that or we locked that a while ago and so they're doing VFX it's this kind of wonderful a little bit of a throwback in that it's it's a story of a a young girl in on a, an island who learns to communicate with this kind of legendary mythical um creature in the forest but it's all animatronics and and puppetry and things like that um so that's exciting and then i'm working on a film called black news um blk nws with khalil joseph who's uh, a really good friend of mine and partner in in our company parallax and it's a like a feature adaptation of what's essentially been an art project for the past four or so years. Um, it's, there's installations. It's a two screen installation. It's up all over the world. There's a couple of spots in LA. And so that's what I'm working on finishing now. And then, you know, who knows in the future, I, I kind of need a little bit of a, of a breather to figure that out. Do you want to tell us a little bit about Parallax? Yeah. Parallax is a company post-production company. Um, Luke Lynch and Graham Zeller started it about a month before I moved to LA and I moved to LA to find Luke Lynch because he was Khalil Joseph's editor. Khalil had made a film called until the quiet comes that just really blew me away and changed my life. And when I saw that film, I was working in Alabama at the time for public television. I went home, told my wife that I think, you know, I think I got to quit my job. I think I have to find Khalil and Luke and, and, and work with them because the, what they are doing, what they're making is why I got into filmmaking. And I just kind of forgotten that, you know, I, I had a great job and with great people in Alabama, but I had just gotten so comfortable that I forgot that kind of burn and, and that desire to, to create um, really challenging work. Um, and so, yeah, I came out here and um, you know, we, me and Luke and Khalil and Graham have been working together ever since. And, um, so we have an office space in Highland Park and, um, you know, good, a good family of editors around us and producers. And it's just a great, great working environment. Let's talk a little bit about last night. Um, in addition to your win, you have Best Picture, Director, Screenplay, the acting wins. Mm-hmm. Um, and I understand there was a party bus in the world. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about your evening. What happened after the show? Well, you know, we we... The bat after you win, there's like a whole gauntlet that you get thrown into, and you're just shuttled from room to room and down these long hallways, and you have no idea where you are. Um, and you know, take a picture here. And there's what's great is there's just champagne glasses, full champagne glasses everywhere you look. So uh they're just giving you champagne and taking your picture, and you're seeing people you haven't seen since before the show, and you're hugging each other, and you're seeing the other artists you respect and telling congratulations and, you know, bumping Oscars. And it's a really strange and surreal and and fun experience. Um, So we did all that and hugged as much as we could before, you know, just getting pulled in different directions. And then um, went to the governor's ball, which was the food was insanely delicious. I had never, I wasn't expecting much, but the food was incredible. And then we, (laughs) We all jumped on a party bus. We stuffed our faces, jumped on a party bus. And it was, you know, everyone who was nominated used as many as of their additional tickets to bring crew members. So we had a ton of crew at the Oscars, which is why whenever you would see anything, everything, everywhere announced, you would just hear this eruption. You know, we had, I don't know, 40, 50 crew members in the audience. Um, That's great. Yeah. We hit the Vanity Fair party, which was surreal. 
Um, and then A24 had a, a nice after party um, just for their films and, and filmmakers. And so, you know, I got to see my, uh, my partners, Khalil and Luke there and, and just dance a little bit and relax and take it all in. It was great. Right. Well, d- during one of your backstage uh, stops, you were in the press room and mm-hmm. we briefly talked about really just the uh, the environment that the, that Daniels create. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that? You, you talked about a, a really great working environment and um, a little bit about work-life balance in general. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important that we figure out a way to make the industry at large, but especially post-production one in which, um, and it's not just exclusive to parents, but, but that to being a parent um, or having a family or wanting to just, spend time taking care of yourself or seeing your friends that that's not somehow um, taking away from your work, taking away from your creativity or your art or, or somehow a sign that you're not as dedicated. I think that stuff is just as important to your work as, as the work. Um, And it goes hand in hand too. I mean, mean, look, like I have talked to so many people throughout the, the kind of award circuit and I've talked to a lot of, women in particular who are like, yeah, I was, I I loved picture editing. I was, I did it as a career. And then I had my kids and I just realized that it was impossible to be a good mother and uh, keep up the pace and the schedule as a, of a picture editor, especially if they're single parents. And that's heartbreaking and infuriating and, and stupid, honestly. And I, so we have to figure out like, why are we standardizing 10 and 11 hour work days, you know, that's not, it's not sustainable. It's not humane. Um, we have to figure out a way to restructure, in my opinion, in a larger sense, just our, our attitude towards work as a culture. And the fact that saving money doesn't take precedence over, um, living our lives. So, and I think that too, that that's, you know, some of the reason that our category was five white or four white guys, you know, and I wish Monica was there to, um, to represent, but she couldn't make it to the awards, right. but that's like, right. The it, editor of tar Monica, Willie was Monica to who edited tar and another film whores glory, which was a really important film for me. Um, I watched back in Alabama before I moved out here. She's insanely talented. Um, and I can't wait to connect with her, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it's just like systematically the industry is not, is not conducive to the diversity that we're trying to achieve. And so, um, you know, we can have all the committees and studies that we want, but like, we just have to start making, um, both small scale changes as far as who are we mentoring, who are we hiring? And importantly, like what? kind of films and what kind of stories are we lending our considerable energy and time to, but also bigger scale changes of what do our working hours look like? Um, what are our benefits like? Are we flexible in being able to work remote? It's, it's improving a little bit with the remote stuff, but you know, there's times where you know, people can work from eight to three and then they got to go pick their kids up and take them home, put them in bed and then finish work at, seven and you know from seven to nine and like if we we need to be able to kind of uh, ingrain that flexibility and 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 humanity into into post-production into into filmmaking at large i think really well said that's such a big concern for so many people the way you talk it sounds like you've hit a nice work-life balance with the daniels how do they like to work or how do they um project that value it's it's pretty freeform with them in terms of just it's it's similar to like a relationship you have with friends like hey you know can you meet up tomorrow for coffee you know oh i gotta push it my kid's sick whatever whatever it's just like yeah sure let's let's try again tomorrow so that kind of stuff as you're working and this is in post obviously production is a different animal um and i know that they were the they were rushing more on production because of the budget and the time and and schedules of the actors and stuff and and some a lot of that's out of their control but they 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 i know from talking to people on set and from visiting set that they're very conscientious of 
how people are feeling, what's going on with them that day. Um, and just a kind of a, a general humanity emanating from the top down of like, we will listen to you. Um, we're not going to prioritize the movie over the person. The person always comes first. So if there's something wrong, if you're upset, if there's just something in your life that's going on, that's troubling you, like um, we can handle it and we can help or we can get out of the way and let you handle it. Um, and so that, that's the way it works with them. So some days I would just be like, look guys, I'm exhausted. Anytime with my kids, it's the middle of a pandemic. I'm, I'm not, I told you I would get you this cut today and I hate to do this, but it's just not going to happen. Um, I need to prioritize my family and myself. And there was never like a heavy sigh and a, you know, I guess if you need that, it was always like, totally, do you need anything? Can I bring over, can, can I cook you some soup and bring it over? You know, do you want me to drop you something off? It was, it's that kind of thing with them. And so that's why they're really special. And, and I think that that's what people are responding to as well. And this, just seeing people kind of fall in love with them the way that everyone who works with them has fallen in love with them, you know? Right. And then on the subject of diversity, obviously there were some milestones last night. Um, certainly Michelle, you know, what, what did you talk to her about or, uh, you know, what was, uh, I'm just, you know, I'm just still pretty starstruck around Michelle. I mean, it's been really <laughs> nice to get to know her through this whole process and she's so so nice and and so sweet and so cool but crouching tiger and dragon was one of those really important films for me growing up that that really blew my mind open to what was out there cinematically and and just a, you know seeing this film from a genre i had never really seen before i'd only i grew up watching american films for the most part except for like these strange foreign films that my father would bring home sometimes. And so when, when crashing tiger broke, that was a big movie for me. And I, I still, when I see her, I see her in that role. Um, but you know, she just, she congratulated me. I congratulated her. It's just, I think we were both just kind of floating on air a little bit and trying to wrap our heads around what was going on. And I'm just so, so happy to have been a, a part of the, the group that, was able to kind of support her um, as far as, you know, Larkin who shot it and, uh, and um, the costumes and the hair and makeup and everyone who just did their best because they wanted to, to represent for her and they wanted to show up for her. Favorite moment of the night, other yeah. than when your category was announced. You know, when key one, I was a wreck and I was like, you know, on the verge of sobbing it was really really and it just felt like it came out of nowhere because it was so early i wasn't expecting the category that early and so when key got up right when they announced his name i just the tears started flowing and and i was so happy for him and you know one of the things i i wanted to say in my speech which i i didn't have time was just a thank you to to key and to michelle both for just not giving up for not quitting on us you know and I'm so happy that they got the opportunity through the script from Dan and Daniel to, to show what they're capable of. And I, you know, you can't, you can't unsee that the world cannot unsee that anymore. They know, they know how incredibly powerful these, these two actors are and the fact that they got to do it together and they supported each other so hard throughout this entire process was so wonderful. So that was, yeah, I think key winning was because it came out of nowhere for me. It was a really great moment. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat today and congratulations again on, Thank you. Uh, on your well-deserved Oscar. Thank you very much. Great to talk to you again. 